Hey, kids, how are you doing? It's great to see you. I am just designing to, I have decided to record a tutorial for this class, which is very important. First of all, I decided to pick from the individual work to put phosphorus. So I have taken a picture of the predict table because the first step you have to do is take your data. So let's obtain the data there. Uh, first of all, uh, let's get the number of protons. If you want to obtain the number of protons, you check the predict table. It says the atomic number is eight. As a consequence, there's eight protons to be precise. The same thing for electrons, right? For the number of electrons must be exactly the same number right, the same number, which is eight electrons to be precise. If you think about it, we have that basically it's all in mind. Now, for the number of neutrons, right, you just need to know how to, you're going to do the molar mass minus the atomic number. What's the atomic number? The one I am going to enclose into the predict table for phosphorus, which is basically this one, right, which is this one specifically, this big number, that one, 15. And the mass, which is 30.9, so you run it to 31, it's going to be specifically uh, um, the mass minus the atomic number. We we'll put this there. You observe this in a better way. We have this, this. Oh, so Mr. Victor, I guess you mean that for number of the neutrons, you subtract 31 minus 15. To be precise, yes, that's what I wanted. That's what I meant. Have 16 neutrons to be precise. Good, that's the data that was important for you to have it. And if you want to give it a check, so I would like to move this chart there, right? Also, something which is very important for you to have in mind is the um, protons, neutrons, electrons, oh, number of levels of energy, number of levels of energy. If you check where phosphorus is located into the periodic table, the number of shells, the number of orbits, the number of levels of energy is specifically the same, the same uh, number of shields, let's put number of shields, it's better. Number of levels of energy is going to be specifically three. That's because it's in the third period or the third row into the periodic table. I guess that's important data for, for us for getting started to draw Bohr's module, but the improved Bohr's module that is called the actual Bohr's module, which represents most of the information there. So then there you have the symbol, oh, I forgot to write the symbol, and the symbol for phosphorus equals to P for phosphorus. Okay, then you put the you are supposed to put you were supposed to put the protons and the neutrons into the the nucleus. The protons and the neutrons. Sorry, it's fifteen protons, and here it is sixteen neutrons. And then how many orbits? It says it says three. So we are supposed to put specifically three levels of energy in there. So we're going to copy this there. One orbit. Right, and then we put another one like this. It is two orbits and then three orbits because it says there's three levels of energy. And each one is going to be named like K, L, and M. That's according to what they say into the periodic table and we're respecting Bohr's module. Now, we know this is the first level of energy, the second level of energy, and the third. So for knowing how many electrons specifically in each level of energy and from now on, I wanted you to, to use the chart, this chart. So this chart is important. This chart you're going to be using and take it into account. So the first thing I wanted to do is there, check the first level of energy. What is the first level of energy? Specifically this one, the chip, check this, check this up, that one. The first level of energy says, get started to fill the first sub level. So one level of energy you put, one s right and the first level of energy completes with two electrons so we put two one is two so from the 15 electrons we have filled two electrons and basically it's done because the first level of energy fills specifically with two electrons so then two electrons completed good but then it says you follow the arrow the blue arrow in here in the right side of the chart from the right side in here it says it says now go from one to the second level of energy. And the second level of energy it is go to fill the S. So 2S with two electrons, go fill the two electrons. And then if you follow the arrow from the 2S, you go to the 2P. So in the same level of energy, you are supposed to fill the sublevel 2P. 
What is it to P? First of all, we know that the S is two, so the P fills with maximum of six electrons. Until now, we have filled like what, two plus two, four plus six, 10 electrons. We're missing five electrons to be filled. If you continue following the arrow, you're going to see after the 2P, you jump to fill the 3S. So you go to the third level of energy and put 3S, and you're supposed to fill the S with a maximum of two electrons. Okay, so two, two plus two, four plus six, 10 and 12. So after filling the 3S, it says go to fill the 3P. The chart says go to the 3P, you put 3P. And you know the P is with a maximum of six electrons, but on, so far we have filled like 2 and 2, 4 plus 6, 10, 12, we're missing three electrons in order to complete the 15 protons, 15 electrons. So now we have completed like this, all of those ones, which are correct, and 15 electrons. So far, we are, we are done with this specific part. Now, the next part I wanted you to do is specifically now the spins. This is called the spins, right? The spins are the rotations for electrons. So you put K or the level K, specifically you design a small box. We're showing how the electrons are moving. And that box has a line. Let's put this line like this, a line. Yes, I in the line you were supposed to, this is the name, it says one S two. So, you put the number of electrons in there. One in this direction. Very good. And one in the other direction. That is for showing that the electrons rotate or spin. Uh, they're no, they are never going to find out each other because one displaces the other one. So for the other one, and you have completed one is two, so the pair of electrons, each arrow represents one electron. You pull the L. The L is specifically the same thing, but what you're going to be doing there is this one. Put this there. How many boxes? One for the S, right? And for the P, P6. So it, a box is for a pair of electrons. So you have to draw one, of, one for the PX, one for the PY, and one for the P in Z. In total, two for six, so then you have it. So what I'm trying to say is this one, like this is the 2s2. It says 2p6. So in total, you're supposed to, wait, let's finish this drawing. Put this in there, there, and there. Okay, let's go to the arrows. 2s2, it's pretty simple to complete that there. Mm -hmm. One electron, two electrons. Good. But the other one is six electrons. So the, way, the order you're going to, go to be is in one direction. One direction, one, two, three, and then four, five, and six. Got it? So you complete that this direction, so that means you have 2P and X, definitely the other one's going to be called 2PY, and the other one's going to be called 2P in Z. So this is 2 PX, two electrons in the PX, two electrons in the PY, two electrons in the PZ, so it's completed. We have to do exactly the same thing for M, sublevel M. So level M has a box, right? For the first level of energy, a box for the 3s2 and the P's. Again, three boxes for the P's. One, two, PXPY and PZ. That's how it works. Remember that, even if they are empty, you draw them. So 3s2, this one you're going to draw like 3p in X. 3p in y and 3p in z, right? Let's see how, how many electrons go in each one. Yeah, okay. So 
we show this. Let's draw the electrons. This one. And definitely two electrons for the three is two because we, we do know it's three is two. Let's go for the one, three P, X, P, Y, P, Z. It says three P, three. The module says three P, three. So in one direction, one, two, and three. Done. Right, two. And three. That's it. So no more electrons. So it stays like that. As a consequence, that means it's three p x, one electron in x, one electron in y, one electron in z. In total, three p three. How do you represent that in the drawing, the final drawing? So what I want you to do is basically something simple, like a graphic like this, right? You represent this with a small nucleus, small nucleus like this, right? The nucleus is the one from Bohr's module, which is this nucleus is there. Now let's draw the, the, the levels from some levels of energy. And uh, you draw the first spe sphere. But for the sphere, I am going to use the color like this. Yeah, that's the S2. Let's draw the two electrons in there with the two electrons for that, okay. It's one electron, two electrons, that's one is two. Let's go to draw the 2s2. So 2s2 is another sphere, a bigger one, right? It's a bigger one. And that one has like two electrons, one and two. But also, it does contain like the, it says px, py, pz. So let's draw the sub-level of energy Px, that's the path of a pair of electrons moving in Px. This is the path of electrons moving in Y. And this would be the, other, the path for electrons moving in Z. And each one says Px, Py, Pz with two electrons. So the same thing, you throw two electrons, meaning that one electron, two electrons for this one, one electron, Two electrons for this one. And one electron. And two electrons for this one. So PX, PY, PZ with two electrons. And let's draw, or let's use another color for going to this, a brown. Let's choose a brown, or maybe a purple this. For drawing another orbit, but for the third, because it says 3S, so the third level of energy, right? And also with two electrons, 3s2, what is there? One, two electrons. And also it says 3px, 3py, 3pz. So let's draw that 3px, 3py, 3pz. You draw it the same path, p in x, like an eight, what is your motto? p in y. And P in Z. Sorry for my drawing, it's not that good, but I guess you understand the concept. And one electron in each sub level. So one in this, it says one in this, and one in this. That would be that would be that would be it. So what I was just trying to explain that in a better way, just for you to have it, some sort of understood. And um, what I did is just drawing like the levels and sub levels of energy. What I did is this. I represented an orbit, an orbit for like this. This was this. This is for the S, right? The same orbit goes in here for the S and another S for this one. As you can see, what I drew there in each one was representing the electrons. That in like in this, it were one electron, two electrons, right? For the other one, I did this one electron, two electrons, and one electron, two electrons. So that's what I did. 
two electrons for each uh, sharp or sphere uh, sublevel of energy. And for the Bs, what we were, what I wanted you to have in mind whenever you were drawing is that we have this B, X, Y, and Z, something like this. Mm -hmm. But I am going to minimize it like this. B, X, B, Y, and Z, the same thing, right? Blue one, electrons, like one, and two, one, and two. So if you did not, in the case, you did not understand the eights. And all of those, these graphics in the same nucleus, right? All of those attached to the same nucleus. And uh, if you go that part, right? I just minimize that thing. The same thing in here. Well, those were in brown. So one electron, two electrons, that's what I did. One electron, two electrons. One electron and two electrons. So, no, no, wait, wait, sorry, not two electrons. It's just, it was just one in each sub level. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Luckily, I watched my mistake. Okay, so basically, that would be the full module of the full electronic configuration for phosphorus, which is what I wanted to understand in today's class. So, I hope you got it. And that's the way you, you 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 work. Remember, step number one: check into the periodic table as I did in here. Located the element, obtained the data there: protons, electrons, neutrons, by subtracting the the molar mass minus the atomic number, the number of shells, the symbols. Then you draw Bohr's module, but the Bohr's module which is improved. Why is that? Protons, neutrons, and I forgot by the way. Now I can finish drawing my final level. It, this is how this has one, two, three, four five, six, seven, and eight. And the last level of energy with five electrons according to what it says into the three, four, and five. And as you can see in the periodic table, it says phosphorus in family 5A. Yes, and it has accomplished that goal for of having five electrons in the last level of energy. The next step would be reading this chart in the right side, this one with the blue arrows there, for knowing where to fill the electrons by following from step, from shell to shell, what the first sub level, then the second sub level, then the set to be three S three. Just follow the arrow and complete the number of electrons according to what I said before in previous classes that the, the S level of energy, the B level of energy, the L, L sub level and F sub level. So the S complete maximum until two, the B maximum until six, the D maximum until 10, and the F maximum until 14 electrons in the last level of energy. So just wanted you to have solid in mind, right? And that would make it being said. So guys, yeah. And then you complete the spins, which is the rotations of electrons according to the levels of energy. That's why I drew the boxes with the arrows as electrons. You check each sub-level according to what you put under the Bohr's module. And then you draw the final one. I am not going to ask you to draw like the, the Ds and the Fs is going to be really complicated, but that will be for another class being said. So that would make it. And that was the class. I hope you're enjoying this class.